Claire Fix plays games. She's alright at it. Hey peeps, um, this is a new game, Narcissu. Uh, probably not new, but I did find it in the Steam library, so um, I'm just gonna go ahead and start. Slip. Uh, side second? I'll play the first one. Translate. Okay, um, I'll trust Aguilis. Voiced. Oh, actually, oh, unvoiced. Two thousand and one, two thousand and two, two thousand and three. Statistics on suicide. Certainly, since I was a child, I wasn't on the healthy side. Actually, give me a moment while I uh, remove the mouse from the uh, <coughs> the stream. Just give me a moment. Okay, I'm back. <coughs> Certainly, since I was a child, I wasn't on the healthy side. But even so, I went to grade school normally. During summer vacation, I played until I was tanned very dark. June, soon after mentoring middle school. Oh, I need to stop doing that. The day after we ordered swimsuits for the swimming class that would start next month. That time was the first time I experienced being admitted into a hospital. Just a little before the first semester midterms, a day where the rain that started to fall felt awfully cold. In the midst of that pure white sky of the rainy season. In the beginning, everyone in the class came to visit me each day. And when I was discharged from the hospital, during the weekends, they would come to my house to play. But that was just the beginning. Four came, winter left. Hospitalised, discharged, outpatient care, and then starting again was hospitalisation. Classmates who were once called friends. At some point became acquaintances. And then turned to strangers. With each turning of the seasons, it seemed that I was disappearing from their memories. It looks like it makes them uncomfortable. For those who live normally, my very existence. That's why I seem to have been erased. Numerous seasons, white overcast skies, passed without even the need to exchange words with anyone. My English textbook from my first year midterm onwards remained brand new. It was there that my time seems to have stopped. This kind of sounds like a little bit of planet, but not quite. Eight years later, 2004, early summer, protagonist. Summer, flowing sweat. In the driver's license examination area, a large electronic bulletin board was installed. All at once, the lights came on, and like everyone else there, I searched for my own number. 237, 237. Scanning among the most, with the mostly lit light panel, I found my own examination number. The tracks beneath the train thudded rhythmically. Because it was just past midday, the train car was quite empty. And in that empty car, I was on the way home from the examination center. In my left hand was the traffic regulations manual I had just received. In my shirt pocket was the brand new license. With this, I'm also normally licensed, eh? I murmured somewhat seriously, but didn't feel any particular strong emotion. It's not like I wanted to drive cars, nor did I really have another purpose in mind. It was just people around me were going to the training centre and had just recommended that I at least get a driver's licence. I just realised this music is actually looping. It's not that bad though. That night. When I reported to my parents that I had gotten my licence. Is that so? Was the short reply. As an experiment, I tried saying that I wanted to borrow the car. And just as shortly, came a you can't. It wasn't like I had wanted to drive the car, but the responses were exactly as I had imagined. They were those sort of parents. The next day, upon waking up, 
my chest hurt, and so I was taken to the hospital. Normally I had little to do with things involving sickness. That was why waiting in the initial waiting room felt extremely boring. Finally, just when I thought the examination was over, this time I went to take x-rays and blood tests. It was made to go. On top of that, for a long, long time, I was made to wait in boredom. Without noticing, I had finished reading three books of Jump manga that was in the waiting room and was reaching for a fourth. And just like that, I was made to do the paperwork for being admitted into the hospital. The brand new driver's license that still lay in my shirt pocket. It looked like the time for its debut was a ways off. A fair way off, maybe? Would have been a slightly better translation. Protagonist, 2004, Autumn. Around when those very noisy cicadas had stopped crying. As usual, I was in the hospital. Of course, it wasn't like I was always admitted in the hospital. I would be in and out. Last month, I had my first experience with surgery. After being discharged, I commuted five minutes for outpatient care by scooter. And even from then on, admitted, discharged, outpatient care, gradually moving to being admitted again. I didn't know anything about PET or ERESA, but I noticed through the comings and goings that a number of months had passed. In exchange with my decreasing appetite, the types and amounts of drugs increased. Even I could see with my own eyes that my strength was declining. My legs felt a bit thin, but... That's not your imagination, the needle on the scale would tell me. And yet... I was looking at myself somehow objectively. As if watching a stranger, like looking at a single scene on television. The sudden things that happened to my body. My head couldn't keep up with them. The feeling that what was happening was real didn't arise. And so even though it was supposed to be my own body, I could only watch myself from afar with cold eyes. Winter around when Christmas trees were disappearing from the streets. Perhaps it was due to it being the end of the year, but I was allowed to return home. In the end, it seemed to be only temporary, but even then, I was a bit happy. In a mix of rain and sleep, I returned home for the first time in a while. For some reason, everyone in the family was gathered. Even though my parents normally didn't speak much, while being a bit stiff. They smiled at me. The little sister who I always argued with made my favorite cream stew and fried shrimp. We sat next to each other in the kotatsu. They peeled mandarins for me. They were excessively kind. That was the impression it left. During this time, I had just a bit of a realization. Still left in the pocket, that brand new license. That license, without giving rise to any practical value, might expire. While having stiff, unnatural smiles directed at me, calmly, vaguely, rather simply, I thought of that, as if thinking of someone else. The new year came, and I returned again to the hospital. For some reason, on that day, I didn't go to the fourth floor but instead to a conference room, was made to go. There, with my father and a doctor, I heard many things, was made to listen. It was that thing called notification, probably. They had an extremely indirect way of speaking, but in the end, it seemed like I was going to die. I see. That was why I was only able to reply with that. I couldn't find other words. From when I entered until I left the room, that was all that I said. Accepting my answer, the doctor moved the ballpoint pen in his hand. Most likely it was the paperwork for the hospice. To the very end, he was very businesslike. My father was very much the same. It was such a simple thing. That was my honest impression. And then... Between that day and the next, I changed from the 4th to the 7th floor, 
from a six patient room to a single. And also, the seventh floor itself was a bit different from other floors. For one thing, the floors were sparkling. The ceilings were too... they were much higher, much broader. Inside the rooms, it was extremely clean. The large windows seemed designed to let in lots of sunlight. However, the windows only opened a tiny bit. When I tried measuring, it was just slightly smaller than allowing your head pass through. To pass through. The other thing was, the colour of the ID bracelets changed. Since the day I was admitted, a vinyl bracelet was also always wrapped around my wrist. Upon it was my name and blood type. That colour had changed from blue to white. High ceilings, white vinyl bracelets, windows that could only open 15 centimetres. The day I was transferred to the seventh floor, it was when the boring New Year's programs were still being broadcast. The time I met her for the first time was also at the very beginning of the year. Oh, is there excitement? What? Go on. Winter, the seventh floor. I feel like all of that was a preamble to something big. Okay. Oh, same music. That's okay. Across the hall, facing the nurse's station, was a lounge-like place. I left in that unpopulated place were a number of sofas, folding chairs, and a large television. On that 28-inch CRT, a meaningless New Year's program was running. Watching that boring television, with an, un with an equally bored expression, was some girl. She had a bi small build and wore pink pyjamas. Her wrist had, just like I did, a white bracelet. Hair that was to her hips left an impression. Hey you, is that interesting? There wasn't with any particular deep meaning. Since there was no one around, I tried speaking to her profile. Not particularly. That was all that she replied with. She didn't even turn towards me even though I had spoken to her. Perhaps she had absolutely no interest in me. She continued to gaze at the television with a bored look. If it's boring, you don't have to watch it. As I thought that, I also sat down in a folding chair. And sitting next to her, I gazed at the television. There was nothing else to do. Nothing else I could do. Quietly, we continued to gaze at the television. On the screen were the usual New Year's programs, pathetic impersonations and parlour tricks. Occasionally ringing out, there. Occasionally ringing out, the host's stupidly high-pitched laugh. In the pure white sunlit room, it dryly reverberated. Reverberated. Say, you. Suddenly the girl spoke to me while still gazing at the television. You're on which time? Which time? What does that mean? Coming here, the seventh floor. Sorry, I don't understand the meaning of the question. I see, it's your first. It seemed that at my inability to understand what she was saying, she had up and gotten satisfied with that judgement. Well, there's no one else around, so it's my duty. Duty. There's that kind of rule. While nodding, she added that there's a rule for someone to teach people who first come here to the seventh floor. Even now, I understood nothing. And as if ignoring me, the girl slowly began speaking. Well, listen closely, alright? The girl's words came by ones and twos. They were slightly different compared to the doctor's speech that I had heard until coming here, up until coming here. In that business-like speech from the doctor, it was said that this was a place to await the advancement of medicine. It was also called a place for healing the heart. Most likely, broadly speaking, that was probably correct. However, 
However, from what the girl said, that was a facade. The seventh floor was within the hospital, but was the only place that didn't give treatments. Simply a place to wait for the end of life. That's what the girl said. That's what I also felt and had the same perception. So did I. I'm on my second time, you see. Second time, what's that? Coming to this place. And the girl taught me. This place called the seventh floor, to be here from the moment of admission, all the way until dying, first of all apparently didn't happen. Even if being cured was impossible, if your heart becomes better, then they would allow you to come to go home once. But after a while, and it turns bad, once again you come back. Among those comings and goings, eventually you die. The place where life ran out, it only differed between home and the seventh floor. Without fail, one would die in either of those. It seems no one has ever escaped that. It was with that meaning that the girl had meant by saying it was her second time. Well, I'll only say this once. So from here on, listen well. Still looking at the doll screen, the girl continued speaking even more. The subject being not about what time the lights would be out and the normal sorts of topics exchanged between admitted patients. She taught me about totally different things. On a third time, you're given a temporary discharge. Prepare yourself. There's never a fourth. You won't be going home anymore. If there's a time that you want to run away, go not to station A, but towards station B. Don't eat anything. That is the shortest path. It will end with the least burden to your family. It was only full of these sorts of topics that gives one pause. Most likely, it was something only for the people who came here. Through just those who participated in moving towards death. These were the things that have continued to be passed down. Was the duty you mentioned earlier this? Yes, that's right. Someday, you tell it to newcomers too, okay? With those final words, the girl slowly stood up. Gently, her long hair swayed and brushed the tip of my nose. Well, it's time for taking temperature, so... And then, just like that, with her back facing me, she began walking towards the hall. I was left alone in that place, with the laughing voice from the screen and the white flowers decorating around the window. In the end, the girl never once looked in my direction. Meaning she thinks you're gonna die. From then, when a few days have passed, finally the New Year's programs ended, and soon the third terms of middle and high school will be starting. Today in the lounge, once more, the figures of the girl and I were staring at the television. It's boring, isn't it? Indeed. The word came back in reply, but both of us were conversing while continuing to gaze at the screen. Hey, is this place always like this? I don't understand the meaning of your question. I, I meant how there's no one around. Nurses, doctors, and add to that helpers. If you take them out, then aside from our own caregivers, I'd never seen anyone else. I guess it's because it's the New Year's? Do you want to know the reason for that? I uh, know it's not like I meant that. Then I won't say. An exchange that wasn't even a conversation. We indifferently exchanged back and forth. A slight breeze came from windows that couldn't open more than 15 centimetres. Occasionally, it would sway the girl's hair and, in the same way, would sway the white flowers decorating around the windows. The two of us, while watching the boring television, were only spending days passing time. There came the sound of slippers. Are the two of you in a place like this? Saying that while rushing up was an elderly nurse. From just glancing at the nurse's station once in a while, this person seemed to be the chief of the seventh floor. So, Setsumi-san, you don't have a fever? It's alright, I don't have one. Setsumi. Apparently this was the girl's name. You can't 
shouldn't be roaming out about outside without permission anymore, okay? Alright, everyone gets worried. That doesn't really matter. My, what kind of statement is that? Really, girls these days, there's just no helping them. And for a while more, the nurse continued scolding. To that she, the girl called Setsumi, let it go by with an indifferent expression. As if ignoring the somewhat noisy nurse, she continued watching the boring screen. Well later, I'll be coming to take a blood sample, alright? Those final words, once again the nurse returned back to the nurse's station. Hey, you. I mean, I can call you Setsumi, right? Wrapped around the girl's wrist was the white vinyl bracelet. While looking at the blood type and name there, I asked. Is something wrong, Setsumi? Why is there no honorific? What? Even though you're the younger one. Hey, why is it that I'm the younger one? No real reason. I just thought so. It wasn't that I was upset at the word younger. It was just, no matter how you looked at it, one would believe I was five, six years older. That was why I took out that license that was in my chest pocket and showed it to her. How about it? Even though I look like this, I'm 20, you know? Like I thought, younger. With just a glance at the license, the girl gave only that reply. Hey, I don't really get it. It doesn't matter, does it? It's only just a bit older. As always, the girl spoke softly with no expression. Those eyes, while looking at the boring television, I felt that they were also looking at her someplace far away. When the morning temperature taking ended, I got onto the elevator, trying not to be seen by the nurses. Coming to the first floor, deliberately passing through the entrance for outpatients, and I just kept walking out of the hospital. The destination was the place I was taught before, not the nearby station A, but the far station B. It wasn't like I was planning on running away. The seventh floor, or home, there was no one who died outside of those two. Before, that was what I heard. It also seemed that the girl called Setsumi had also gone many times to Station B. That was why, for no real reason, I simply felt like wanting to go see that place once. It's not like there are guards around. Even so, us residents of the seventh floor were different from other admitted patients. While also thinking about the but maybe, I continued walking on the street to the early morning station area. Glancing at hurrying commuters and people going to school, I slowly moved on at a measured pace. After walking a while, taking about 25 minutes, I finally arrived before the station. In terms of bus stops, it was about four's distance. In a way, there's quite a bit of people around. That was the first impression upon seeing Station B. Because my clothes were pyjamas, I stood out somewhat. However, if, just like this, I bought a train ticket, I felt could, without a single problem, go anywhere. Why was it not Station A, but this Station B that was recommended, I didn't know. However, if one were planning to run away, I thought it was a simple thing. Certainly, certainly, the girl was also supposed to have come many times, but why was it that she still remained at the seventh floor even now, I wonder? Early morning before the station. While watching the people hurrying by, suddenly, that thought occurred to me. That night, after the lights had been turned off, holding on to a book of manga, unable to sleep, I wandered around the ward alone. Normally, wandering around after lights out would get one scolded badly, but us residents of the seventh floor were given a relative amount of freedom. And with the lights off, the usual lounge was pitch dark. There, I saw her figure. Hey, today you're looking outside? Mm. 
In the dark room, there was a response, but that face remained looking beyond the window. Immediately, I started talking about what happened during the day. That reminds me, this morning I went all the way to the station. Just like you told me, I went to see Station B. I see. But the girl's response was no different from the usual. Because she was supposed to have gone before, I had thought that there might have been some kind of reaction, but... Thinking about that, as well as how she still remained here, did it mean that she really had no intention of running away? I will soon be able to go home. Eh? Suddenly the girl opened her mouth. Words as if she had seen clear through to my heart just now. But next is the third time after all. So we might not be able to meet anymore. Mm, ah, that's right. Most likely, when she said that she would be able to go home, she was talking about a temporary discharge. In this place called the seventh floor, being admitted more than three times, it apparently never happened. Especially, unlike the elderly, when considering the rate of progression of disease, it was even more so for younger patients like us. With that kind of meaning came the words, we won't meet again. Say, which would you choose? Choose what? Which one you plan on dying at? Suddenly, hearing the word death, my words caught for just a moment. Well, I haven't thought about it yet. I see. Well, you're still on your first time. The girl spoke in a lonely murmur. Of course, I knew even I couldn't be here forever. Like everyone else, going in and out of the hospital, slowly weakening, until someday. In the end, either this seventh floor, or surrounded by thin smiles, it would come to a choice between those two, probably. I don't want home. But I don't want here either. Then what will you do? Nothing in particular. I won't do anything. While I'm still able to walk on my own, I'll just go somewhere. Somewhere? You... Even though it was obvious that if one wanted to run away, one could, this girl still remained on the seventh floor. When I thought about that, do you have some other place to go to? You... want to pull me back? Eh? Or perhaps you want to come with me? Oh uh, no, I, I didn't mean it like that. Then don't ask. While gazing out the window, the girl spoke indifferently. As always, it had been a conversation where she did not even look in my direction. However, just that time, I saw that her usual expressionless profile seemed sad. Taught that the third temporary discharge would be the last, the first time I have come to the seventh floor. And then, a girl who would soon face her second time. For me, I still couldn't really feel the things that were happening in reality, but... Someday, would I also come to make such a face? From before dawn, rain fell. Occasionally also changing to either sleet or snow, it lightly continued coming down. Within that, I was in the usual place watching the television. As always, this seventh floor was devoid of people. Is it interesting? Nope. Boring. The girl came from the other side. Exchanging only those words, she quietly sat in the folding chair next to me. And then, today also, the two of us began gazing at the television. Surely, the girl was also the same. There was nothing else to do, nothing else she could do. Ah. Surprisingly, she responded to something on the television. Something the matter? Not particularly. The words were the same, not particularly, but it was a response that was different from usual for the girl. Becoming interested, I turned my eyes to the screen. What was on the screen that was... What was on the screen was some kind of nature scene. 
On a beautiful hill, trees and flowers blended into a landscape. And focused on the screen were a, giant, a great many white flowers. There were flowers I remembered seeing before. They resembled the white flowers even now, decorating the room by the windows. Are those the same flower? Look, aren't they exactly like these? While speaking, I pointed first at the screen and then towards the window. They're the same kind, but strictly speaking, they're different. Giving just a glance at the flowers by the window, the girl once again returned to gazing at the television while answering. To say the truth, even if she denied that they were the same, to me, I didn't know the difference between the two. And anyways, for me, whether the flowers were the same or different, it didn't really matter. Instead of that, the girl normally would never participate in conversation. That girl surprisingly continued with her words. That was why I also tried to maintain the conversation. Are you maybe knowledgeable about this sort of thing? Not particularly. Really? But I can't tell the difference. The white flowers blooming beyond the screen. The flowers in the vases beyond the girl's profile. While vaguely looking at both of them, I continued further with my words. So, so, these are orchids or lilies? Look, they've got a whitish colour, right? Even though I had no interest, I managed to continue speaking. However, the girl soon became like usual and fell silent. With her usual expression, she only gazed at the boring screen. And when I had given up on the possibility that she would take up the conversation, I once again began to move my eyes back to the television. Narcissus. Eh? They're Narcissus. While answering, for the first time, she faced me, swaying her long waisted, waist, waist length hair. While pointing at the flowers shown on the television, she looked at me. No offense, but that can't be older than 20. She looks like she's five. Just like the, pl the flowers displayed on the screen, there was a white vinyl bracelet wrapped around a wrist with white skin. The first time that I saw that face, I thought I saw the briefest of smiles. Wow, that abruptly stopped. Oh, that's the end of the first chapter. And it's two chapters. Okay. Oh man, my back was in a bad posture. I couldn't really move. <laughs> the chair starts creaking after a while. But um, yes, that's Narcissus. Narcissus. Okay, they have Narcissus, but it's Narcissus. All right. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna continue this story, but this was a little sample of the game. Um, the rest of it would be online on Steam for free. I'm not promoting them or anything, but like, if you want to continue finding out about this story, by all means, go ahead. Um, but I'll probably stop here. So thank you for watching, and I hope my commentary was good. I hope it wasn't too fast. I hope the Australian accent didn't put you off a little. And um, I'll see you in another gameplay. Bye!